So let's move on to 7.7, .7, interactions and accelerations. Okay, so in the earlier part of this chapter, we made this statement that the ratio of the x components of the accelerations of the interacting objects, so if you've got two interacting objects, one and two, they're interacting, and they, they collide, obviously they interact, so the ratio of their accelerations is equal to the negative inverse of the ratio of their inertias. So something to this effect. Acceleration of 1 divided by acceleration of 2. That's the ratio of the accelerations. Is equal to the negative inverse of the ratio of their inertias m2 over m1 okay now we just want to quickly show you how we get here how do we get to this statement okay well we know that in an isolated system we know that in an isolated system p1 plus p2 initial is equal to p1 plus p2 final so the total initial iner uh, momentum is equal to the total, the sum of all the momentum final. Okay. So if again, if you rearrange this and you calculate the delta P1 and the delta P2, you will get delta P1 plus delta P2 is zero. Right? The change in all the inertia is zero in an isolated system. So that's essentially what we have here. Del we just rearrange that. Delta P1 is the negative of delta P2. Um, but we know that delta P... Uh, no, the, the next thing... We, oh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, the next thing that we need to see is that during the interaction, when they collide, during the interaction, the delta t, the, the time span over which that collision, that interaction occurs, is the same for both of these objects. So, if we take delta p1 and we divide by delta t1, so we can do this. This is what I'm trying to say. Okay? So we can divide by delta t, and actually these are the same. So you've got just got delta t, delta t, they're both the same. And what is, what do we have here? What is delta p1? Let's break it down again. It is m1 delta v1 over delta t is equal to the negative of m2, right? Because delta P1 is mass times, or inertia times delta V1. Okay, so delta V2 over delta T. And so then, if you, we've seen this guy before. That's an acceleration right there. This delta V over delta T is uh, your average acceleration. But if we want the ac instantaneous acceleration, what do we need to do? We need to um, make this, this delta T uh, smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? We, need, we need to let the limit of delta T tend to zero. So as we let this limit, this, this, this time span tend to zero, this guy that's meant, that's, remember delta V over delta T is average acceleration. And if we let this delta T tend to zero, we end up with uh, dv dt, right? Which is your acceleration, which is your instantaneous acceleration. So if we let this tend to zero, uh, this delta t tend to zero, we end up with instantaneous acceleration. So we have this. m1 acceleration 1 is the negative of m2 acceleration 2. And if you rearrange this, these are vectors, by the way. If you rearrange this, you get m1 over m2 is the negative of acceleration 2 over ac acceleration 1. And you can rearrange this in various ways, but you end up with exactly the same thing here. Okay? 
So this is interactions and accelerations.